Hello everybody. Today we're going to be installing a WJ Dana 44A truss. So what that means is WJ is a 99-04 Jeep Grand Cherokee and the Dana 44A is a, an iron axle with, a, uh, with an aluminum center section. So it's actually a, a decent axle. You know, people don't like the aluminum center section and that's understandable, but it's actually a pretty strong axle. So we've made a, a truss for it that uh, that'll take any strength concerns away from the aluminum center section. This is how you can get the parts from Iron Rock. So, we've got the main truss section, some brake lines, some instructions and some hardware. This is a gusset plate. This is your main rear plate, your left and right front plates, and a gusset plate for the three bolt holes on the top. We've unboxed all our parts. Now, before you take your Jeep apart, it's always a good idea to make sure all your parts are here. So there's a parts checklist right on the instructions. Go through it, make sure all your parts are present. All these parts drop together with tabs and slots. Male tabs on this part, female slots on this part. Everything drops into place. This last gusset plate goes right here. But we're not going to weld that on just yet. So drop all your parts together. Make sure all your gaps are tight. There's no gaps, no, uh, no funny spaces or anything. And then make sure everything's square and go ahead and tack weld all these parts together. Just a few tack welds here and there just to hold it together before finish welding. WJ's used three threaded bosses. You can see these three holes are for the three threaded bosses on the top of the axle. Those three threaded bosses are going to bolt your A-arm or your four-link bracket or whatever you're bolting onto the top of your axle uses those three threaded holes. So if you've got a broken off bolt in there or a stripped thread and there's no easy way to repair it, this truss is a great way to repair that. We provide three nuts. All you have to do is weld them on underneath and then you chop off that threaded boss right off your axle. You can do one, you can do all three. Now you've got actual steel threads on your axle. It's a great way to make a repair to a damaged WJ axle. To make the installation easier, we're going to remove the whole axle assembly from the Jeep. So take your tires off, disconnect your shocks, disconnect your control arms, ABS wires, breather hose, your brake line, plug your brake line so it doesn't drip brake food all over the place, and then pull the whole axle out from the Jeep. Right, disconnect your drive shaft as well. Pull the whole axle out of the Jeep, it'll just make welding go a little bit easier. All right, we've removed the rear axle. Uh, we took the brake hoses that ran from the T-block over to the caliper on each side. We've removed those. Um, we cleaned up the surface for welding. So right along the back side and along the front edge, uh, there was a little clip over here that we cut off. And next we're gonna install our T-block eliminator. So we're going to unbolt this thing from the axle. Clean this up, put a little bit of blue Loctite on it. Just a little brake cleaner. A little blue Loctite. it up nice and tight, no torque spike needed. Alright, we're going to disconnect our breather line from the Jeep side. It's routed up in behind the fuel filler, so you're going to need to pull out some tree rivets, pull off this inner fender flap, and it's right back here. You can see I'm wiggling it back there. It routes right there, there's just one zip tie to cut. If your vent hose is old and cracked, it's a great time to replace it. You 
definitely need to put this on before you put your truss on the axle. Makes things a lot easier. Okay, we've already tack welded this together and then test fit it on the axle to make sure everything fits properly. And then we went ahead and welded it and now we're ready to put it back on the axle. So we're out your vent hose. Through the hole. And these three bolt holes line up really well. Okay, we're actually gonna tighten these three bolts up before we weld anything. Uh, one other thing to mention is that you do wanna paint the inside of this before you put it on. Just don't get any paint on the surfaces that are going to be welded. It's all welded up. We're going to spray some paint on it and route some brake lines. So our truss is all painted. Brake lines are run. ABS wires are connected. Breather line. Control arms. Everything's hooked back up. Uh, we left the shocks out in this part of the video just so that we could droop it out far enough for you guys to get a really good look at the truss. Uh, a few things I want to point out about the truss. Uh, first of all, first and foremost, it's great for strengthening up your axle. Uh, the aluminum center section, this takes a lot of the load off the center section. So it's really going to strengthen it up, keep your gears in mesh. So when you're out there beating on your Jeep, your ring and pinion are just going to live a little bit happier life because of this truss. Um, another cool feature is a, a tie down mount. So we put holes on both sides. So if you trailer your Jeep, you got a great place to hook up your ratchet strap. Um, one other thing, this truss works at stock height, it works at any lift height, it works with any accessory on the top. So your stock A-arm, Iron Rock A-arm, other companies A-arms and four link kits, whatever you have, this truss will work with it. Um, and it just looks fabulous. It gives you that peace of mind while you're out there wheeling.